بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا وبعد إخوان إن tonight's قراءة and in tonight's recitation we heard the completion of one of the greatest surahs in the book of Allah subhanahu wa taala سورة البقرة the surah that Allah عز وجل after سورة الفاتحة Allah عز وجل follows the mention of سورة الفاتحة وسورة البقرة Surah that he begins, Ikhwan, the discussion of the mu'mineen and categorizes the people into three main categories. Mu'mineen, believers, kafirin, non-believers, and munafiqeen, and hypocrites. And Allah Azza wa Jal spends and discusses over numerous verses the characteristics of all of them. Allah Azza wa Jal generalizes as it relates to the believers, for indeed the whole of the Qur'an revolves around the characteristics of the believers. And then he mentions the kuffar and the non-Muslims, those who have disbelieved and rejected, and he makes mention of their characteristics, and then he goes into something from detail concerning the munafiqeen, those who feign Islam, but have kept within themselves kufr. And then Allah Azza wa Jal mentions for close to a juz of Surah Al-Baqarah, the sifat of the Yahud, and that which is related to the Yahud and to the Jews. And that which occurred in the past as it relates to them since prophethood and messengership occurred among them and was sent among the offsprings of, Is of Ishaq. And the Salah Azawajal discusses numerous affairs from their qisas and from their stories and what occurred with them. And then we have, of course, those verses are uh, for the believers likewise to reflect upon. It is not to point the finger at the Yahud. Rather, it is uh, for the believer to reflect upon. That is that the believer, ayyuh al he learns from those qasas, he learns from those stories, he reflects upon those stories. He's acquainted with the nature of the qawm and with the nature of those people and that which occurred in the past. And he reflects, ikhwan, upon their outcome based upon the actions that they manifested. And thus he benefits from that. And then Allah throughout the rest of Surah Al-Baqarah mentions Ikhwan, numerous ahkam related to various uh, issues of the Sharia. We have the mention of the affair of Salah. We have that which is related to Zakah. We have the mention of Hajj and Umrah. We have the mention of many, many ahkam. From them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that which is related and in particular, mind, being mindful and guarding the salah. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, guard your salawah, guard your prayers, and the middle prayer, yani salatul asr, and stand before Allah Azza wa Jal in obedience. And then we have the mention of salatul khawf, wa in khiftum farijalan aw rukbana, the fear prayer. And that is that if a person is in a situation of fear, it is permissible for him to make salah rukbanan, rijalan, or rukbana. That is, standing. Bima'ana that he doesn't make ruku or sujood, rather he stands and prays, and his ruku and sujood is done with his head, depending upon the nature of the fear. Similarly, as it relates uh, to the fear prayer, he may do so upon his riding beast. Allah Azza wa Jal likewise mentions uh, as it relates to uh, the affairs and ahkam, the affair of Hajj and Umrah. وَأَتِمُّ الْحَجَّ وَالْعُمْرَةَ لِلَّهِ فَإِنُّ حُسِرْتُمْ فَمَا اسْتَيْسَرَ مِنَ الْهَدِي Complete Hajj and Umrah for the sake of Allah. But if you are prevented, then you should slaughter what is easy from slaughtering. Allah Azza wa Jal makes mention of the affair of the ayman. لَا يُؤَاخِذُكُمُ اللَّهُ فِي أَيْمَانِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَاخِذُكُمْ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that he will not take it to account for a laghu in your ayman, yani that is the laghu in your oath. Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that the laghu in the ayman is that a person says, it is wallahi, or no wallahi. Yani he doesn't intend to make an oath. And thus we have, ikhwan, these scholars categorizing the oaths into three categories. We have the laghu, or the uh, yameen, or laghu al-yameen, which is when a person says, as Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, it is that one says, yes, wallahi, or no, wallahi, or I don't know, wallahi. Uh, and 
a person doesn't intend an oath. And then we have the yameen uh, al-mun'aqid. The yameen al-mun'aqid is that a person, he says, or he makes an oath, he swears by Allah that he's going to carry something out. He swears by Allah about something that will occur in the future or that he plans to do in the future. And then we have the yameen al-ghamus, which is from the, the major sins, and that is that a person swears by Allah concerning something that he doesn't intend to do. That he makes an oath, he swears, but he doesn't intend uh, to carry that out. Or he swears and he lies. By Allah, this thing is like such and such, and so he sells it based upon a lie. And that, no doubt, is from the kabair al from the major sins. The one who makes an oath and breaks it, then kafaratuhu it'amu asharati masakin. Min awsati ma tut'imuna ahlikum. As Allah mentions, its expiation is that one feeds ten poor people with the medium or an average meal that you would feed your families or that you clothe them or that you free a slave. And whoever is not able to do so, then uh, that he feeds or afwan that he fasts for three days. Uh, and so Allah Azza wa Jal makes mention of the yameen. And there's a difference between that and the vow, since the vow is that a person uh, makes an oath with Allah Azza wa Jal that he's going to carry something out if Allah blesses him with something. That is different from the oath. Similarly, we have a mention in Surah Al-Baqarah of that ikhwan which occurred with certain nations and certain individuals. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the affair of those people who kharaju min diyarihim wa hum ulufun hadar al maut. Those who left their diyar, left their homes in thousands, fleeing from death. And that is as Imam Ibn Kathir and others have mentioned, it is in relation to a nation of individuals whose nation were afflicted with the plague. And so they left their lands fleeing from the plague. فَقَالَ لَهُمُ اللَّهُ مُوتُوا And so Allah Azza wa Jal said to them, die. And they died. And that is as Ibn Abbas and others, رضي الله عنهما mentioned, they were somewhere in the region of 4,000 individuals in number, fleeing from the plague. Fleeing from death. But they fleed from death and from the qadr of Allah to the qadr of Allah. And Imam Ibn Kathir, he mentioned that that has in it an indication of the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal, as it relates to the affair of qadr, that the decree is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so one may flee from something believing that he is fleeing from as it occurs here death. When in actuality, Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed just that. And so we cannot escape Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the decree is in his hands. Naam, Allah has laid down certain affairs as means towards ends. That which is known as the asbab and we hold on to them. If a person wants a child, it is a must that he marries and he has relations. And then Allah Azza wa Jal may bless him with one. These are means towards ends. But well, the origin, Ikhwan, is that the believer recognizes and constantly lives his life understanding that the affairs, his affairs are in the hands of his mawla subhanahu wa ta'ala, are in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal, likewise within the surah, discusses the longest verse in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Ayatul Dain. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, idha tadayantum bidainin ila ajalim musamman faktubu. And Allah Azza wa Jal commands within the ayah that if you have a debt with someone that you write it down. And the one who takes the debt from that individual, he is the one that should scribe it. And that that is wajib and compulsory upon you when you take a debt. And so we have numerous ahkam in Surah Al-Baqarah. And then Allah Azza wa Jal uh, mentions and enters into Surah Ali Imran that we heard tonight, the beginnings of. And within it we have the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب أخر متشابهات It is he who has revealed to you the book within it are آيات محكمات within it are clear verses and they are the mother of the book and other verses that are ambiguous وأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه منه بتغاء الفتنة Allah mentions as far as those who have deviation in their hearts, then they follow that which is ambiguous.
from the verses within the Quran, seeking to interpret them away and seeking to make fitna. And within the verse, Allah Azza wa Jal informs the believers of the affair of those who have within them zayg and deviation from Ahlul Bid'ati wa Dalala, the people of innovation and the people of Bid'ah. Those who, because of deviation within their heart, they attempt to pervert the verses within the book of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal informs us of their sifat and their characteristics. Just as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the affair of those who pervert the book from those who came before. وَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ لَفَرِيقًا يَلْوُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ بِالْكِتَابِ لِتَحْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَقُولُونَ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ Allah mentions that indeed from among them, yani from the people of the book, a, a group who use and who uh, uh, utter with their tongues that which will make you perceive and believe that it is from the book. وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ But it is not from the book. And they say, هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَمَا هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ They say it is from Allah, but it is not from Allah. وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they lie against Allah while they know. And so we have then a contrast between that which occurs within our ummah and that which occurred in the ummah that came before. Those who perverted the book claimed that it was from Allah Azza wa Jal, changed the words of the book. And within this ummah, those who seek to interpret the words, though they may not necessarily change the words themselves, but they interpret the words seeking to interpret them away and make fitna. But no one knows the interpretation of them but Allah. And so within this ummah we have that which resembles those who occurred and, uh, and existed in the ummah previously. Yani, a people who perverted the book, changed the book. Either that they changed its words or they changed its meanings and perverted that which was present within the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. But Allah Azza wa Jal mentions to us that there is always a group from among this ummah, from among the ummah and from among the people that repel that which Allah Azza wa Jal or that which is added and uh, uh, يعني, uh, 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 or, يعني, in addition to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and other than that. وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسِ We heard yesterday. وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ لَفَسَدَتِ الْأَرْضِ If it were not for the fact that Allah Azza wa Jal used some people to repel others and the earth would have become corrupt. And so that corruption that they attempt to, to add to the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised a ta'ifa and a group that repel that, that expel it, the people of sunnah and hadith. And that remove those accretions from the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, individuals try to add. And that no doubt is manifest in the statement of the Messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, la tazalu ta'ifatun min ummati, lahirina ala al-haq, la yadurruhum man khadalahum, wa la man khalafahum, hatta ya'atiya amrullah, wa hum ala thalik, they will never cease to be a group from among this ummah, manifest upon the truth, not being harmed by those who oppose them or those who forsake them until the affair of Allah Azza wa Jal comes and they are upon that. Nasallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala wa fikrna wa iyaakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yirda wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyina Muhammad.